Hey guys, Fitness Science here. Today I'm going to be taking some of your recommendations and doing a video on something called Shilajit, which some of you wanted to see. And it's like this sticky substance that's found primarily in the rocks of like Himalayan areas and is actually formed from the decomposition of plant material. Some people think it may boost testosterone and there's only really one randomized controlled trial that's like a good primary study on this substance. And that was done in 2015 in India across 96 patients aged from 45 to 55. They said to all these guys, okay, we're gonna take your hormones at baseline and then split you into two groups, one of a placebo group and one who took Shilajit at 250 milligrams twice daily so a total of 500 milligrams daily over a period of 90 days so three months in total and they actually found that total testosterone after the 90 day period actually increased in the shilajit group by 20.45 percent so around about 20 percent and this was higher than what they were at day zero significantly but it was also higher than the placebo group at the same point at day 90 and free testosterone followed a relatively similar pattern which is not surprising and that also increased by about 20%. Now, interestingly, in terms of mechanisms, LH and FSH were not decreased overly in the shilajit group. In fact, luteinizing hormone held steady. So the luteinizing hormone being the main driver of testosterone synthesis didn't really change and follicle stimulating hormone FSH, which drives essentially sperm production in the male body, wasn't changed either. In fact, that actually increased. And now that's really important because some testosterone boosters like Fedosia agresta seem to influence the HPG axis negatively and actually lead to testicular dysfunction. But with shilajit, it doesn't seem to have a suppressive mechanism. It may have some other mechanism of action. And the researchers actually hypothesized that it may almost act like a pro-hormone. So DHEA was increased in the group taking shilajit in this study. And they're thinking that instead of directly acting on the Leydig cells to stimulate testosterone synthesis, which would then have a negative feedback loop in terms of the HPG axis and turn off spermatogenesis, they're thinking that it may actually not be suppressive in that way but it may actually increase the circulating DHEA, which is then a precursor and can then lead to the formation of more testosterone because more precursor means more is going through that pathway essentially, which then turns into our testosterone. And I think that's the main thing for some of these testosterone boosters. We really want to try and target a testosterone booster that's non-suppressive in nature because the whole idea of taking a testosterone booster naturally rather than just taking testosterone itself is the idea that we can boost testosterone and not have a negative impact on our endogenous product. And the fact that Shilajit doesn't seem to be suppressive is actually a huge positive in this manner because essentially it's a testosterone booster that doesn't inhibit our endogenous production and have that negative feedback loop back into the HPG axis. Now for dosing, I'd stick to what the study says because it's really all we have to go off at the moment. And that's about 500 milligrams daily um, and see how you go from there. Now, toxicity studies have been done right up until about two grams per kilogram, which um, is an absolutely huge amount. That would be like an 80 kilogram male or a 175 pound male taking 160 grams of shilajit, which would be absolutely insane. But more realistic safety dosages have sort of been around that 0.2 to one gram per kilogram mark, which is about 0.09 to 0.45 grams of shilajit per pound of body weight. But there's no real need to even go this high. You know, the study elicited a good testosterone response from just 500 milligrams daily. That would be a good start in my books. But yeah, shilajit um, is legit, doesn't seem to be bullshit and has some actual good promise behind it in terms of the research. Obviously, I think a longer study with more people rather than just, you know, 96 in this study would be, um, would be ideal. But overall, pretty good. Um, the research needs to come out more, but I don't think it's shit and could be an interesting testosterone booster to add to your regimen. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate all the support and I'll see you in the next video.